Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. I am here in my new office. I will show you around. Look at my skylight there. Check that out. Had to have that there. Yep, and this is it. <laughs> Pretty sparse at the moment here. I do have this little nook here for maybe making a soundproof recording area. That might be cool. So anyway, I just moved in, obviously. So it's a little echoey. I don't have everything set up, but it's gonna be pretty cool once I get everything set up in here. It's a little smaller than my old office, but it will definitely work. I plan on spending more time out and about here since I'm in San Diego and the weather is lovely like all the time. But I am happy about, you know, the, uh, the sun, the, what do you call those things? I forgot now. Anyway. <clears throat> Enough about that. <laughs> Let's talk about the topic here. So I thought it'd be appropriate to talk about moving since I just moved and I have a tip for you for moving that I wish someone would have told me and that I, I wish I would have thought about it a little bit more before I did it. So I'll tell you my story here. So I have moved a lot, right? I have moved around and I've done it every single way you can imagine. So I have rented a U-Haul and driven it across the country, packed all my stuff in there. I have rented space on a cargo, on a truck, where you basically get so many linear feet of space and you load your stuff in there and you put the bulkhead in and then they come and pick up the carton and take it. I have hired movers, to local movers, to load up a truck and to unload a truck and where I've packed it myself. I've done movers where I've packed everything and they've moved it. And this last time, I decided to go all out and do the full service move because I was just tired. Uh, I had too much stuff going on and I wanted to get this done with. So I went and I started calling some reputable companies. Uh, I won't name names here because uh, I don't, uh, it, it, some of these companies are, they're really networks of different companies. You have to understand that's how a lot of these big movers work, is that they have contracts with other other like local storage areas and, and local movers. So anyway, I got some quotes and stuff, and I got about three quotes, and I found one that seemed pretty good, and I called up the guy and I said, he said, oh, this is an estimate, it's non-binding. I said, okay, I understand. Uh, the other person gave me a guarantee not to exceed. Can you give me one? And then he said, oh, you know, it says it right there in the contract that you can't pay 10% more than this estimate. And I said, oh, okay, so if, if it turns out that when you came and estimated my stuff, you were wrong and there's more, and it weighs more or whatever, uh, the max I can pay is 110%, right? 10% more than than what you estimated. Yes, that's correct, right? So I should have gotten that in writing, right? And it turns out I get here to San Diego and I close on my house and I move in and the moving guy, the guy that's actually driving the truck, calls me up and he says, hey, I got your stuff, I'm gonna deliver it at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And then that later that evening, the one of the guys who runs the moving company there calls me up and says, hey, uh, you're, you're, I talked to the truck driver, good news is your stuff will be coming in at 9 a.m., The but you were overweight, so I, you're gonna have to pay this bill, and he gives me a bill that is uh, over $1,000 more than that estimate, certainly more than 10% of what what it was. So uh, I said, yeah, you know, I, I have, I'm, I thought I'm only supposed to pay, you know, 110% total if it goes over the weight, which I doubted it went over the weight because unless they just estimated poorly, I, I had less stuff than they estimated, right? Because I actually got rid of a ton of stuff. So anyway, he's like, oh, no problem. We'll just, uh, you don't want to pay this? What we'll do is we'll just, put, I'll just tell the truck driver to put your stuff in storage and then you can, we can handle it in court and then you can eventually get your stuff. So I said, <laughs> I was like, oh, I see. I see how this works. I know this trick. You're holding my stuff hostage. This this old scam. I thought you were a reputable moving company. You're gonna hold my stuff hostage, you know, and, and give me an inflated price. 
So finally I came down to this point, you know, to make a long story short, I got the bill of lading, which they had goofed on and it said that the estimate was binding. And so we came to an agreement of paying 110%, like they said. So uh, everything is fine. I got my stuff, it got all delivered and, and everything, but uh, this just goes, you know, a, a, a word of caution, which I should have known better, right? When I'm, th I, was, I was in a rush, I wasn't thinking this through. I had a lot of things going on. I was shipping my car, I was, you know, trying to close on a loan, trying to sell my house, all this kind of stuff. But, you know, what I should have done and what you should do if you're moving, if you're hiring a moving company, is get everything in writing and make sure that you, first of all, make sure that you understand that estimates generally are non-binding and they say it on there, which I, I saw that, but then I talked to the guy on the phone. So if you talk to someone and they say, oh yeah, the max that will charge you is this, get it in writing and say, even an email should suffice really. I'm not a lawyer, so don't take this as legal advice, but that would at least prove something is just, you know, get an email that says, hey, this is, and this is what I should have done. I should have said, so the max price that I can pay is this, right? Even if I'm overweight, no matter what, and, and written it down and then got them to say, yes, that is it. Because that would have made things a lot easier and no one would have been able to dispute that. In fact, it would be better to just have them write and say, hey, can you sign this? document that says that this is the max this is the guarantee not to exceed on this so lesson learned with that and just be aware i mean there were a bunch of people also that quoted me a lot lower like half the price and i guarantee you those guys would have certainly been pulling some kind of a blackmail type of scam once once someone has your stuff right i mean that's the other thing to think about is and i didn't think about it on this end is like you're moved into your house you need your stuff like you're camping out basically, and they've got your stuff, you're waiting for it to deliver in that time frame. They've got you over a barrel, right? That's called being in a squeeze. So you could get really screwed there. I mean, even if you did take it to court, even if you did have something binding, if it, again, another reason to go with a reputable company and probably to check referrals, you know, that's another thing I probably should have done. But again, I was in a rush. But, uh, you know, even if you had that, they could really put the squeeze on you and say, hey, well, fine, we'll, we'll just take it to court. <laughs> and and you can try and call their bluff, but you know, they've got your stuff and, and they could just throw it in storage and you know, chances are you're gonna pay it and it's gonna hurt you a lot more than it's gonna hurt them. So anyway, just something to think about, you know, moving companies have shady reputations for a reason is because they have so much leverage on you and a lot of people take advantage of that. You know, uh, after doing all this, would I recommend you know what you know i've moved a lot of times right so i've done the u-haul i've done the all, all that stuff i think probably the most efficient for cost and for effort is uh, is like if i did this again if i were moving across country again what would i do from everything i've learned is i would basically because i don't want to pack all my stuff that's a lot of work right and these guys are good that that pack it and have all the materials and stuff so instead what i would do is i would hire local movers to pack the stuff and you can probably get that for cheap right if you are you hire packers specifically and to load up space on a truck you can rent truck space by the linear feet there's a lot of or you know container or your container company where they drop a pod or whatever but i think the truck space is actually cheaper with, with shipping companies you can find those uh, where, where freight lines have have extra space you get the local movers to pack it up you get them to load it up for you and put in the bulkhead and then you you pay to have that shipped across and then on the other end, pay local movers to unload it for you and not unpack it because unpacking is easy. So anyway, that's what I would do. That makes the most sense to me. But uh, but yeah, the U-Haul thing is too much of an effort, I think, and not worth it. And, uh, and just having the pod dropped and trying to load it all up yourself, it's probably worth paying someone to do. But I, I, I think I won't do the full service move again. It was really expensive. I had my stuff held hostage. And yeah, not totally not worth it. So anyway, hopefully that, that helps any of you that are moving, you know, at least think about these things because I certainly did not think this through and I could have been, I could have ended up worse than I was. Luckily this is a somewhat reputable company and you know, they, once I showed them that bill of lading that had the binding agreement, they weren't gonna totally screw me. And you know, worst case scenario, I guess I would have paid an extra thousand dollars, which wouldn't be the end of the world. But anyway, if you like this video, I, I know it's off topic, but subscribe to the channel. Talk to you next time. Take care.